Unless you enjoy unbearable humidity, disease-ridden waters, and hungry alligators, spending time in a swamp is no picnic. However, swamps contain far scarier things than dirty water and reptiles, and some unlucky people have encountered mysterious monsters, creepy cults, and inexplicable artifacts beyond the cypress trees. Today, we're going to look at all of these spooky discoveries and more as we climb inside our airboats, head into the wilderness, and explore some more terrifying things that people have found in swamps. Mystery Monster The tropical biome of the Amazon rainforest is home to a huge range of fascinating yet dangerous environments, ranging from floodplain forests to grasslands to dense, unforgiving, mosquito-ridden swamps. And back in 2021, a man called Austin Cornell came face to face with a strange monster in a swampy region of the Amazon. Austin's teenage son, Carlos, is an aspiring wildlife photographer. So the father-son duo decided to go on a riverboat tour to capture some top-tier photos. The tour started off smoothly until Carlos spotted a horrifying creature rise up out of the water by the boat. Carlos quietly snapped a photo, but the camera's flash startled the creature, causing it to thrash towards them with a set of giant claws. Austin and Carlos were struck with fear, but mercifully, the creature changed its direction, swimming to the riverbank and pulling itself onto the shore. As Austin and Carlos breathed a sigh of relief, they realized that their tour guide was <laughs> laughing hysterically, and when he regained his breath, he explained that the terrifying monster was actually a sloth. We usually view sloths as cute, slow-moving creatures, but they're actually able to move three times faster in water than they do on land. This meant that when the sloth was startled by Carlos's camera, it was able to quickly thrash through the water and swim for dry land at surprising speeds. But while it seems this particular creature feature was a case of mistaken identity, who's to say for sure that those long-clawed, slow-moving sloths aren't plotting some grand evil scheme, taking their sweet, sweet time until one day they strike. The Rougarou Let's move from that misidentified sloth to a monster that's more than a little bit scarier. In Louisiana, generations of kids have grown up with stories of the Rougarou, a vicious werewolf that supposedly lives deep inside the South Louisiana bayou. Lots of locals claim to have encountered this legendary cryptid, and in 2021, a Redditor called Madame Corleone shared two unsettling encounters with the bayou's boogeyman. Back in 2012, Corleone's stepdad, we'll call him Rick, was fishing in the bayou with some friends, when the group decided to tell some scary stories to pass the time. Rick had heard that if you call for the Rougarou in the swamp, the monster will call back. So he decided to scare his friends by standing up in the boat and yelling into the wilderness. He wasn't actually expecting to hear a response, but as soon as he finished the call, a deafening roar echoed from beyond the cypress trees. The group were convinced that the roar belonged to the Rougarou, so they decided to pack up their fishing lines and flee the swamp. Rick was pretty shaken up by this encounter, but several years later, he decided to return to the bayou for a boat trip with his family including Madame Corleone herself. After a long day in the swamp, Corleone's stepdad started talking about his previous Rougarou encounter when the fam asked him to try and summon the cryptid again. Reluctantly, he agreed, but this time he went for a different approach by grabbing some pieces of driftwood out of the water and hitting them together, making two loud cracks. After a brief moment of silence, two deafening bangs echoed through the swamp as something knocked back. While they'd gotten the response they asked for, something about it felt incredibly sinister. So the family decided to end their fishing trip early and boat back to civilization. Now, Corleone is convinced that they encountered the Rougarou. But unfortunately, they don't have any evidence to prove their story, and of course, they could be making it all up for attention. Now that said, if her stories are true, I think her stepdad should stay out of the bayou from now on. The Rougarou might not let him escape for a third time. Swamp Enigmas When you think of swamps, you probably picture alligators, snakes, and the occasional turtle. 
However, the swamps in Florida are incredibly biodiverse, and they're populated with a range of animals, including dolphins, manatees, and high-diving monkeys. Yes, I'm trying to, but Kay's telling me to back up. I'm not going to. Oh, he's... We're fine, we're fine. It's raining monkeys! The region is home to countless species, and back in 2022, a TikToker called Kelly thought she'd discovered an entirely new species of snake swimming in the Florida Everglades. Now, snakes are known for moving on their bellies, so Kelly was shocked to see this creature gliding along a creek with its head out of the water while attempting to eat a fish. The serpent's behavior is pretty creepy, but when Kelly posted her video onto TikTok, some wildlife experts explained that the creature she'd spotted was actually a bird. The anhinga is an American bird with a curved neck, and in some cultures, its appearance has earned it the nickname snake bird. In the clip, the creature's beak is partially obscured by its snack, making it look like a serpent. But Kelly isn't the only person who's encountered a hard-to-identify swamp monster. This terrifying TikTok went viral back in 2022, as the uploader claimed to have found an undiscovered monster slithering through the swamp. The cryptid is pretty freaky. However, skeptics soon commented on the video, explaining that the creature is likely an injured alligator that's missing two legs and part of its tail. These injuries would completely change a gator's appearance and force it to slither around on its stomach, making the injured creature look like a terrifying monster. Somebody get that poor animal some gator aid, and I'm not talking about the drink. Menacing Mushroom Swamps are known for their menacing wildlife, and back in 2020, somebody snapped a photo of a swamp creature that's far creepier than your average alligator. At first glance, this creature looks like a ghost, drifting through the swamp in a white cloak. However, the cryptid isn't as scary as it initially seems, because it's actually the work of an artist called Susie Brister. Susie's art involves creating eerie humanoid figures that blend into a natural landscape, and this monster is actually one of Susie's friends, wearing a custom coat made from 100 platinum blonde hair extensions. The creature is the world's scariest blonde bombshell, and although the cloak is entirely made of synthetic hair, some people have compared its appearance to the naturally occurring lion's mane mushroom. The lion's mane is an edible fungus that grows all over the world, and its pale tendrils look just like the ones in Brister's piece. According to Brister, this is purely coincidental, however, the similarity between the paranormal figure and the real fungus explain why Susie's piece looks so at home in a natural environment like the swamp. This combination of the natural and the supernatural highlights Brister's skills as an artist, though I think if I stumbled across this figure at night, I'd be too busy peeing my pants to appreciate her artistic talent. A Nuclear Error Let's move from that freaky fungus to mushroom clouds as we look at the astoundingly terrifying time that an American nuclear bomb fell into a swamp in North Carolina. Yep, you heard that right. So how did America manage to nuke itself? Well, back in 1961, a US B-52 bomber was transporting two nukes across America as part of a government plan to keep one-third of the USA's nuclear bombers airborne at all times. This was to make sure the US was always ready to respond instantly to a potential nuclear attack. The particular bomber in question followed a route starting and ending at Seymour Johnson Air Force Base, only on one flight, a fuel leak caused it to lose power and crash into the Nahunta Swamp just outside of Goldsboro, North Carolina. 
As the plane fell from the sky, one of the nukes was ejected with a parachute, allowing it to fall safely and get tangled in a tree. However, the other nuke's parachute didn't deploy, and it hit the ground at 700 miles per hour, sinking into 20 feet of mud. These four megaton nukes were 200 times more powerful than the ones used at Hiroshima. So, if they exploded, the blast would severely damage much of the Goldsboro area, and the nuclear fallout carried on the wind could reach Philadelphia, 400 miles away. To ensure this didn't occur, the Air Force sprang into action by quickly recovering the nuke in the tree and digging down to find the one buried underground. Before long, they discovered chunks of the buried nuke, realizing it had disintegrated on impact. They also realized that the explosive system in the bomb was set to arm when it hit the ground, and that a single unclosed high-voltage switch was the only thing that prevented it from exploding. As it had disintegrated, and the bomb's two cores had separated, the risk of a full-scale nuclear explosion had thankfully been eliminated. But while the Air Force managed to carefully recover the bomb's primary core, they were forced to refill the hole and leave the secondary core of toxic plutonium and uranium at the site, as it simply couldn't be found in the deep, flood-prone mud of the swamp. Today, Nahunta Swamp is arguably the most terrifying wetland in America as it still holds half of a disarmed nuclear bomb that almost blew a giant chunk out of the country. Ooh. A Voodoo Curse Let's stay in the States and move from North Carolina to the dark and dangerous bayous of Louisiana. And when you drive through the Louisiana Swamp on the I-55 highway, you'll come across a sign directing you to Ruddock, a town that doesn't exist. See, at the turn of the 20th century, Ruddock was a bustling community nestled in the swampland. However, in 1915, a devastating hurricane destroyed the town, leaving nothing but thick swampland and a creepy cemetery. The hurricane was a tragedy, and one local legend suggests the disaster was caused by a voodoo priestess called Julia Brown, who used witchcraft to summon the storm as an act of revenge. According to the legend, Julia lived in Frenier, another now ghost town eight miles south of Ruddock. Julia was Frenier's go-to spiritual healer for years, and she was well-liked in the town. However, as she got older, she felt that people were taking advantage of her, and her attitude towards Frenier was completely changed. She stopped helping the townspeople, and in the months leading up to her death, she was repeatedly heard muttering the phrase, When I die, I'm taking the whole town with me. This continued until she passed away, and despite her ill wishes, the town still gathered for her funeral on the 29th of September 1915. Now, this date is significant because at around 4 p.m., as the funeral goers put the final nail in Julia's coffin, her prophecy came true. A devastating hurricane swept through Louisiana, destroying Frenier and Ruddock, and claiming 275 lives. While Ruddock wasn't the primary target of the priestess's curse, the wide-ranging hurricane brought it to its knees all the same, along with areas of nearby New Orleans. Now, this may sound like fiction, but the area's old census records prove that Julia Brown was a real woman who worked as Frenier's healer, and her funeral was indeed held on the day the very real September 1915 hurricane hit. Of course, just because Julia existed doesn't mean she caused the natural disaster. However, the coincidental timing of Julia's funeral has convinced certain locals that she's responsible, and some of them believe that if you stand in the ruins of Ruddock and Frenier and listen closely, you can still hear Julia Brown's ghost cackling from the water relishing in her final act. Satanic Swamp If you head around an hour's drive northwest out of Ruddock, you'll eventually reach Frenchtown Road. This rural street just outside of Baton Rouge leads to an old wooden railway bridge and some thick swampland. At first, the road looks pretty innocent, but the bridge is marked with satanic graffiti, and for decades, locals have supposedly found creepy wooden figures, burnt crosses, and sacrificed animals hanging from trees in the surrounding swamp. This has led to rumors that 
that a satanic cult lives in the area, and in a forum post back in 2015, a local man called Daniel claimed that he encountered them back in the 80s. Apparently, Daniel was driving down Frenchtown Road in 1988 when he spotted some people gathered in the swamp standing around a bonfire. He stopped his car to get a better look before realizing that the people were wearing hooded robes and they appeared to be performing some kind of ritual. As Daniel watched on, one of the figures spotted him and a few of them started running towards his car, prompting him to throw it into reverse and escape the swamp as the cult members gave chase. He escaped, but not without a long-lasting sense of dread and paranoia about what he'd seen. Now, Daniel's encounter sounds pretty horrifying, but some local skeptics don't believe his story more the rumors of the Frenchtown cult in general. Apparently, the wooden railway bridge has always been a popular hangout spot for drunk high school kids, and the adjacent swamps are frequented by hunters who skin rabbits and hang their remains on tree branches. The skeptics believe that when high schoolers spotted these rabbits, they started a rumor that the animals were sacrificed. These rumors evolved into stories about a satanic cult, which eventually became a full-blown local legend that's been passed down for generations. Whatever the truth is, I'm definitely not willing to drive down Frenchtown Road to prove him wrong. Alligolfer even if you don't believe in satanic cults and ghosts, America's swamps are full of real monsters that are just as scary as the supernatural. In Florida, no creature is more fearsome than the alligator, and sometimes these predators make it out of the swamp and head into civilization. These manicured lawns belong to Florida's Bonita National Country Club, a beautiful golf course that backs onto a 50,000-acre patch of wild swampland. The golf course and swamp are separated by some shrubbery, but in 2018, this border was broken as a giant gator escaped the swamp and strolled across Bonita National's fairway. As this monster prowled across the green, the golfers were forced to stop their game and wait for it to crawl back into the swamp. In most golf courses, the only hazards you encounter are bunkers and ponds, but in Florida, lots of courses are built next to swamps, and the golfers regularly deal with these deadly creatures. Usually, they'll simply pause their game to let the gators pass, but sometimes brave golfers choose to play around them instead, teeing off while standing next to deadly apex predators. Who knew golf could be such an extreme sport? Mimicking Monster Congaree National Park is a 26,000-acre swamp in North Carolina with a raised wooden boardwalk. Back in 2021, a Redditor called Super Soup Sandwich, we'll call him Soup for short, went for a late-night hike in the park, walking along while listening to a soundscape of croaking frogs and buzzing insects. The walk was pretty relaxing, but halfway through it, the swamp's wildlife simultaneously went quiet plunging the park into complete silence. Soup froze on the spot, while suddenly the silence was broken by something even scarier, the sound of Soup's wife calling his name from the pitch darkness further down the boardwalk. Now, ordinarily, Soup would love to hear the sound of his wife's voice, but uh, here's the thing. She was out of town on a business trip. Soup knew that something in the swamp was mimicking her. Soup started to freak out when suddenly the frogs and insects started singing again, returning the park to normalcy. At this point, Soup decided that he must have imagined the voice, so he took a breath and continued his walk. Things went smoothly for another 15 minutes when suddenly the wildlife fell quiet and Soup heard his wife again calling out to him in a panicked tone. Soup paused and waited for the voice to continue, but this time he heard something splashing through the water to his left. Soup spun around with his flashlight, and it fell on a six-foot-tall, pale humanoid figure watching from the tree line of the swamp. The creature ducked behind a tree, and Soup ran, sprinting along the boardwalk for almost two miles until he burst out of the swamp and drove back to civilization. When he got home, he later shared his story on Reddit, and some immediately linked it to the cork Kata, a four-legged cryptid from India that mimics human voices to lure people to their death. However, they noted that the dog-like Krokata only really appears in Indian 
Indian and North African folklore, and the monster that Soup saw, or at least claims to have seen, was in the States. Of course, neither the Crocata nor any other swamp cryptid have any real factual proof of existing, so it's just as likely it was really Soup's wife in a morph suit pulling off an incredible prank. That's what you get for leaving the toilet seat up. An Ancient Idol so far, we've seen plenty of the alligators and cypress trees found in American swamps. However, the world is full of swamps that are completely different to the ones found in America. In northern climates like the UK and Russia, it's more common to find peat bogs, a type of wetland that's made up of a spongy soil called peat. Peat forms when plants decompose in areas with high acidity and low levels of oxygen, and these unique conditions mean that most bacteria struggles to survive inside the soil. As a result, if something falls into a peat bog and sinks into the mud, it can sometimes be preserved for thousands of years without seeing any decay. These bogs are a gold mine for archaeologists looking for artifacts, and incredibly, the world's oldest wooden sculpture was found in a peat bog in Shigeru Russia back in 1890. The Shigir idol was found in 10 different parts, and when it was fully assembled, it revealed an effigy that stood at over 17 feet tall. When scientists dated the sculpture in the lab, they discovered it was over 12,000 years old, making it more than twice as old as Stonehenge and the pyramids. They also realized that the entire effigy was carved with some mysterious markings. Anthropologists believe that these markings could contain a coded message that an ancient civilization created to pass teachings down to later generations. However, no one has yet been able to properly decode the symbols, so for now, historians are left to wonder what the 11,000-year-old message means. Experts have theorized that the message contains an ancient creation myth, or a map to an unknown location. However, I'm pleased to announce that I've personally been able to decode the ancient text, and when it's translated into a modern language, it reads, subscribe to be amazed, huh? Oh, talk about ancient wisdom. The Witch Bog Let's wade into another peat bog now as we head to England and meet some witches from Pendle Hill, Lancashire. In the early 1600s, the peat bogs surrounding Pendle Hill were supposedly home to a coven of witches who lived in a cottage called Malkin Tower. These witches allegedly terrorized the area by killing livestock and poisoning cow's milk until 1612 when the local government issued a very final sentence for 10 people after they were judged guilty for the crime of witchcraft. Today, the Pendle Witches have become a Lancashire legend. However, Malkin Tower was immediately destroyed after the accused met their end at the hands of the law, and historians have spent the last 400 years struggling to determine the building's original location. This lasted until 2011, when a group of water engineers digging in the Pendle Hill bogs accidentally uncovered the ruins of a 17th century cottage with a mummified cat buried within its walls. The find was pretty spooky, and some locals were convinced that the engineers had finally found Malkin Tower. However, a group of historians weren't convinced, and they noticed that the presence of a mummified cat was actually evidence that the house wasn't owned by witches. They explained that placing a dead cat in the walls of your home was a common charm that regular people used to fight against evil spirits in the 17th century. So its presence actually suggests that the house belonged to someone who was scared of sorcery. Of course, even if the house is the iconic Malkin Tower, the Pendle Witches most likely weren't actual witches, at least not to the extent they were accused of. Records from the area's history reveal that several of the accused worked as spiritual healers of the town, and as we've seen already, relations with spiritual healers could be tense in the past, to say the least. Others among the accused tragically were reported to be physically deformed, and in the uneducated perceptions of the day, such deformities were often associated with the devil. The leaders of Pendle Hill essentially blamed these outcasts for the town's misfortunes and punished them for it in the worst possible way. So, whether Malkin Tower ever resurfaces or not, tread carefully in the peat bogs around Pendle Hill. Such a dark history is sure to bring with it, at the very least, some serious shivers down your spine. An Irish Monster 
In County Wicklow, Ireland, you can come face to face with a monster that lives in a park called Victor's Way. If you stumbled across this creature at night, you'd probably think you'd found a withered ghoul crawling out of a murky pond. Thankfully, Victor's Way is actually a sculpture park, and the 20-acre space is full of statues of Hindu gods and terrifying monsters. This specific piece is called the Ferryman's End, and every year, hundreds of terrified visitors stumble across it. Although the Ferryman looks like a swamp monster, he doesn't actually live out in the wilderness, and he isn't the only swamp statue that's tricked people online. While cleverly generated AI scenes like this can look convincingly eerie, real images of things like this statue can be equally misleading when shared online with inaccurate attributions. Online users have claimed this statue was found abandoned in the middle of the Croatian swamp. However, with some digging, I've discovered that it was actually made by an artist called Daniel Popper in 2019 to be used as the backdrop for a DJ set at Croatia's Modem Festival of Art and Music. The way the lights hit Daniel's sculpture is pretty cool, but this footage proves that the sculpture definitely wasn't discovered by brave people exploring a swamp. It was discovered by ravers exploring their minds. Still, I can't help but feel that intoxicated festival goers would still be at least a little freaked out by the sight. Crossing the Line Let's move from those man-made statues to a natural phenomenon that's just as eerie. The George L. Smith State Park in Georgia is a 1,600-acre swamp that surrounds a giant lake called Watson Pond. Every year, thousands of people visit the park to kayak in its swampy waters. But back in 2018, they arrived to find that all the park's tupelo trees bore the same coloration on their trunks, and they were divided by a line running through the entire swamp. When the photo was shared on Reddit, netizens speculated what could have caused the line, and their theories covered everything from witches' spells to claims that the image was altered in photo Photoshop. However, the line was created completely naturally, and weeks before the photo was taken, this area was submerged underwater. It turns out the National Park Service drained the park in 2018 to repair a dam in Watson Pond, which exposed the trunks of some tupelo trees that grew out of the lake. Over the years, water has permanently stained the bottom half of these trees, creating this effect when they were exposed. The resulting illusion was pretty incredible, and thousands of visitors flocked to see it before the swamp was reflooded. However, I'll bet the fish and crawdads who live in the park were less happy about the change. Well, with that, it's time to row back to civilization and end our expedition through the terrifying things people found in swamps. Do you have any creepy swamp encounters of your own to share? Hey, let me know down in the comments. And thanks for watching.